grade, we're going to talk about something that we're going to try to do this year called number talks. And I want you to think about that in your head. What might a number talk be? I know you've kind of done it before in third grade, but what might a number talk be? What do you think? Go ahead. I think it might be mental math because we don't have pencil or paper. All right. What is mental math, though, Erin? It's math that you do in your head. Maybe. So you're kind of saying we're doing math in our head. He noticed that I didn't ask you to bring any pencils, no paper, and he's right. We're going to be practicing some numbers in our head. I may ask you to add them, multiply, subtract, or divide. Today we're going to add some numbers together. I'm going to ask you to do it in your head. No paper, no carpet math on the carpet, not on your arm. I want you to practice in your head. And when you do it in your head, I want you to come up with a strategy of how you can add those numbers together. Now, there are some rules for number talks, okay? When you have your answer, I want you to go like this, telling me I have an answer and I found one way to get that answer. But I want you to challenge yourself and come up with another strategy. When you do, show me two fingers, come up with another strategy. I've seen people come up with four or five strategies before. Try to do that. So once I see a thumb, that's your hand signal to say I have one strategy, okay? When you start giving me your answers, I'm going to ask for a sum today. You can raise your hand and give me your sum. All right, then I'm going to ask you to defend your sum. That's when you want to show me how many strategies you have. And I'm going to call on some people to defend the sums that you come up with. All right? There's another rule in number talks when, so we can agree or disagree. If you agree with an answer that is up here, would you go like this? You're going to point your thumb at yourself and point it at the person that's saying the answer. So if this person right here, this student, has an answer and you want to tell her you agree, just respectfully agree. But do you know what? I've seen sometimes kids or students give a wrong answer. Would you go like this and do it respectfully, okay? It's okay to disagree, but I want you to feel safe. I want you to feel like you can defend even a wrong answer and show us what you did and we will help you. All right, did I leave anything out? Is there anything else we should know when we're doing a number talk? Okay? Yes. Would you like us to raise our hand when we do the sum? When you give me a sum and I ask for the answer, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. All right? You'll get it. It's pretty easy. All right, are you ready for your first one? Yes, we are. Okay. And um, there's no talking. It's your ideas in your head. Okay, here's your first one. I'm going to give you 57 plus 23. If you come up with an answer, show me that you have a strategy. Those of you that have a strategy, I'm challenging you to think of another strategy. Just show me your strategies right now. I didn't call for answers yet. That's good. That's how I want you to do it. This is good practice, okay? If you have one thumb up, think of another one. If you have two fingers up, think of another strategy. Okay, I think I have my sum ready in my head. Do you have an answer? Okay. Lupita. 80. 80. Okay. I'll do Pete, I see some people agreeing with you. Thank you. That's good. Cheyenne? Um, I got 81. 81. Okay. That's very close, so <coughs> we'll see. Uh, oh, does anybody have another answer? 70. 70. Hmm. 
That's interesting. Okay. Erin? I have 79. 79. All right. So I think that's all of our answers. Um, well, let's start with this one right here. Okay. Who said 79? Okay, do you have a strategy that you can tell me yes, about 79? And defend 79 for me. Okay, so first I split the 50 and the 7 up. And then I split the 20 and the 3 up. Okay. And I added 7 plus 3 <coughs> equals 10. Okay, and now let me write that down. So first you split what? Um... Okay, like that? Yes. All right. And then 20 and 30. Did you say 30? I said 30. 3, okay. And then I added 7 and 3 together. And I got 10. Okay. Then I added the 50 and the 20 together. Good. And I got 7. And you got 7? 70. 70, okay. Was this your answer, 79? Yes, ma'am. All right. Are you changing your answer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You just missed it by one number there. So we have a vote for 80. I didn't write your answer here. See how doing a strategy, creating a strategy, helps you come up with sometimes a different answer. I want you to look at these numbers. Do you know... Where you got this 50, why did you do this right here? And then you did 20 and 3. Why did you do that? I did that so I could <coughs> so I could do the tens separately and I could so I could do the one separately and then I could add them together. Did you hear what she said? She did the tens separate from the ones. <coughs> what do you call when we're working with tens? and ones. Maybe You're breaking apart values. We're breaking apart numbers. Are we using place value? Yes. yes. So I'm going to make an anchor chart of our strategies and the first one is going to be breaking apart numbers using place value. But I want you to think back to third grade, think back to second grade. When have you broken apart numbers before? Um, uh, I might have broken up numbers <coughs> if um, uh, if I wanted to make an easier equation, yes. which I call that decomposing. Okay. So we can say she actually decomposed, or she was decomposing the number. I'll put down here, break apart. And I like how she did it. She used it by doing it with place value of numbers, the tens and the ones. That was a very important part to say. So you can come up with a strategy by decomposing the numbers. Does anybody have a different strategy? Or does anybody want to? Who said 70? I would like to see somebody defend 70. Okay. Go ahead. So I did. I split up the 23, so it would be 20, and then I split up the 57 and made that a 50, and then I plus 20 plus 50 okay. equals 70. Okay. And, and then you are done. Your answer is 70? Yeah, but I'm not done. Oh, you're not done. Okay. Yeah. So, so then I did 7 plus 3. Uh huh. And then that equals 10. Okay. And then 70 plus 10 equals 8. Okay. Do you still agree with 70? No. What is your answer? 80, because I forgot to add the, the 10. There's another 10 there. I'm glad you remembered that. Very good. 
um, who said 80 or 81? Did you say 80? Oh, he said he didn't say 80, but he would like to defend it. Go ahead. All I did was a verb of 23 and 23. And then, what was... Okay. So what I did was 57 plus 3. Hmm. Okay. Equals 60. Okay. And then I did 60 plus 20. Why did you do 57 plus 3? She broke up the 50 and the 7. You kept 57 and said 57 plus 3. Why did you do that? Because I wanted to make it shorter. What does that mean, make it shorter? Like make it small, smaller, so I'll have a better count because if I did 20 first, I'll have to harder harder time. Okay. So did you start with a larger number and then just add the 3 to it? Yeah. Okay. And what do you think he made when he said 57 plus 3? Do you know what you are actually doing when you did a 57 make, plus 3? Making a simple number. He did. He made a simple number. You know what I like to call that? That's our second strategy. We can make a friendly number, yes. So I'm going to put up here, make friendly numbers. What was nice about those numbers that helped you make a friendly number? Does anybody know? Michael, what was nice about this that helped him make a friendly number? He was making a 10 by using... Three. He was making a 10 by using what? The 3 and the 57. And the 57. The 3 and the 7 make a 10. So 57 plus 3 made 60.